Hey everyone, this is Owen with Motion Array, and in this tutorial I'll show you how to make a write-on animation with your own handwriting. In the example, you'll see the write-on, but I'll also go over speed ramping the footage and adding texture. Alright, let's get started. I'll start by making a new composition. I'll name it Write-on Effect, and I'll make it 1920 by 1080, 2997. The duration is good, so I'll hit OK. Then I'll import my footage by double clicking in the project panel. That brings up my dialog box and I'll navigate to my footage. I'll import it as footage and hit open. With my footage imported, I'll drag it into my composition. Before I do my speed ramp, I'm going to do some quick color correction on this footage just to make the colors a little bit brighter and add a little more contrast. So I'll go up to Effect, Color Correction, Curves. In my Curves panel, I'm going to bring down the bottom a little bit and the top I'm going to bring up a little bit just to add some contrast. Then I'll go to Effect again and go to Color Correction, Hue Saturation. In the Controls, I'm going to change the Master Saturation to 10. And then in my drop down up here, I'm going to go to the blues and bring up my blues a little bit. And my cyans, I will also bring up a little bit. Just to make the colors of the water look really nice. The last thing I'll do for color is add a brightness contrast. So I'll go to effect, color correction, brightness contrast. And then I'll just boost the brightness by about 20. All right, that looks good. So I'm going to highlight all these effects and then just twirl them down to clean up my effects panel. Now I'll apply the speed ramp by going to Effect, Time, Time Warp. Time Warp is really cool because you can animate the speed of the footage rather than just time remapping. Right now, the speed is set to 50, which is half speed. With my playhead at zero, I'm going to change that speed to 5000, which is maxed out. And then I'll set a keyframe. Then with my playhead moved to frame 25, I'll change that value to 200. I'll pull up my keyframes with U on the keyboard. Then I'll highlight both these keyframes and right click and go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then I'll right click on just the second keyframe and go to keyframe velocity and set my incoming velocity to 75%. Then I'll right click on my first keyframe, go to keyframe velocity, and then change the outgoing percentage to 90. I'll bring my work area into about one and a half seconds by hitting N on the keyboard, and then I'll RAM preview. I think this is looking good. The one thing I did notice though is that my time warp got rid of my color correction, so I just need to drag that effect back on top of all the color correction I did. And there you go, there's my color back. So that does it for the footage. Now I'll move to the write-on effect. I'll start by creating a new solid by going to Layer, New, Solid. I'll make sure it's comp size, and I'm going to call it Write-on. Then I'll hit OK. Then I'll double click on the new solid. This opens it up in the Layer panel, and this is what I need to do for the write-on effect. I'll move my playhead to zero, and then I'll go to my brushes panel over on the right. If you don't see the brushes panel, go to window, brushes. Next, I'll select my brush tool up here in the tool panel, and then I can choose my brush. I'm choosing a brush that isn't a perfect circle so that I get more variance in my writing. I'll leave my diameter angle and roundness all at 45, but I'm going to bring my hardness up to 100. I'm also going to decrease my spacing to 15%. Under brush dynamics, I'm going to turn size from pin pressure to off. Next, I'll locate my paint panel. If you don't see the paint panel, you can find it under window paint. In my paint panel is where I'll get to choose the color. I'm pretty happy with this color, so I'll leave it as is. I'll leave my opacity and flow at 100%, my mode at normal, and my channel at RGBA. By default, duration is set to constant, but I want it to be on write-on. 
Write-on will record my strokes and automatically keyframe them based on how long it takes me to draw them. So now all that's left to do is use my brush to write on the text. Using a tablet for this step makes it way easier as it's a little bit more natural for writing. So I'll bring my playhead back to zero and then I can start using my brush. As soon as I lift my pen, you'll notice that the stroke goes away and that's because it's keyframing it as a write-on. So if I drag my playhead, you can see it being drawn on. This is great, but the only catch is now if I wanted to write it all on at once, I would kind of be blindly writing it. Through experimenting, I've found that the easiest way to get something I'm happy with is to do one stroke at a time and move my playhead. That way I'm not writing blindly. So I'll undo what I just did and start over fresh. I'll start by doing the top of the T and then I'm going to zoom into my timeline with plus. And if I pull up my keyframes on my right on layer with you, you'll see that I've got the keyframes for that first bit. So I'll move my playhead just a little before it ends and then I'll draw the bottom part of the T. You'll see that it creates a new brush and it's got keyframes already. So I'll continue this process until I finish my word. Okay, so I've got my whole word written out now and I'm happy with the way it looks. I'll switch back to my composition view and I'll check the box for paint on transparent. In my timeline, I'll zoom out a little bit and bring my work area over to where my keyframes stop, which is at about six seconds for me. I can already tell that this is gonna take way too long to write on, so I'm gonna adjust these keyframes. I'll pull up all the keyframes for the write on with you, and then I'll make my timeline full screen with the tilde key while my mouse is hovering over it. That way I can see all my keyframes a lot easier than having to scroll. I'll highlight all my keyframes except for the last brush because the last brush is a line and I'm going to do that separately. Then holding the option key, I'll click and drag the last keyframe and bring it towards the beginning of the timeline and that scales all of my keyframes together. And I'll shoot to make this about two seconds. Now I need to drag the handles of each brush stroke so that they're visible when their keyframes start. I'll hit tilde again to exit full screen with my timeline. Then I'll drag my work area in and do a RAM preview. I could afford to overlap some of these keyframes to make the write on more fluid, but I'm not gonna worry about it for right now. Now what I'll focus on is the line animation. I can click and drag the brush stroke with my cursor so that it's closer to the rest of the animation. I'll also drag out the second keyframe to make the animation a little bit longer and then I'll apply an easy ease to it. I'll right click that second keyframe and go to keyframe velocity and set that incoming velocity to 90%. That looks good, I just need to adjust the position of the title to be in the center of the screen. Using the selection tool, I'll drag my layer till it's in the center. Then I'll twirl my layer up to clean up my timeline and switch its blending mode to overlay. With overlay, it'll have some transparency and blend with the footage really nicely. As nice as it is, it's a little difficult to read. So I'll duplicate my layer with Command D just to make it easier to see. The last thing I'll do is add a texture. In my project panel, I'll double click to bring up my import dialog and I'll select my footage. With the footage imported, I'll click and drag it into my timeline. I'll then set the blending mode to multiply. This clip has audio, so I'll turn that off. Right now, the texture's a little muddy, so I'll fix that with some color correction. I'll go to Effect, Color Correction, Levels. Then I'll bring in my white just to about the peak, and I'll bring the black in quite a bit, and I'll bring the mids closer to the black. I think that looks pretty good. 
Well, that concludes this tutorial. I hope you guys found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see more tutorials, please go ahead and subscribe because we're making new ones all the time. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.